All right. Are you ready? Yes. Is everyone in the room ready? You better be ready because it's happening. We're already four minutes over time, so yes. this is happening. Um, I won't take any more of your time, Hedy. I'm sure that you will introduce yourself working at DRW nowadays. Uh, we know each other for a little while. We even know each other from the Ruby community. Can you believe it? Because we're both old. Um, <laughs> anyway, Hedy, please go right. take the stage. Uh, all right. Uh, so good late morning, everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know we are behind, and that's a problem because I like to talk, and I talk very fast, and I still have an accent, a different one, but still. So uh, that will be problematic because I will try to talk slower, but then I do not want to run over time. So we'll see. Uh, so questions are welcomed through the course of it. Uh, so please, uh, if uh, like you don't understand anything, you want to like kind of you know dig in something, please absolutely stop me. Ask the questions. Okay. Uh, uh, all right, and. Uh, Let's roll on. So uh, the topic today is uh, PostgreSQL and software engineers, so which is like not such a usual topic on the Postgres conferences. In fact, I think I'm the only one work, <laughs> working or talking on the subject. Um, so who and why this thing does not? OK, hold on. OK, I still need to turn in this direction to click. All right. So. I'm Hetty. You know, I'm Henrietta Dombrowska, so my parents did not know I will live in the United States where everything is shortened, you know, because we have Pharaoh Toot, T Rex instead of Tyrannosaurus Rex, and Toot instead of Tutankhamon, and Henrietta. Nope. So I go as Hetty D in Postgres, and I always say there is only one Hetty in Postgres. And for uh, those who kind of lost track of me changing jobs like a millennial, though I'm like on my 41st year in this industry, but I know last couple of years were wild. So currently I'm a database architect uh, in DRW, which is the trading firm, which has many offices in many parts of the world. And if you want to know what the company, which makes me extremely happy, does feel free to chat to me during the breaks. Okay, I will be happy to fill you in. My other important and more consistent job, I would say, I am a local organizer of the Chicago PostgreSQL user group, which I brought from almost nothing to, at some point, it was second largest in the Western Hemisphere. I did not check it recently, but we have over 1,000 people. We did not stop uh, our meetups during pandemic, so I only uh, <coughs> canceled one meetup during pandemic, which was on uh, March 15, 2020. <laughs> and <laughs> since then, we went on Zoom, and now we happily returned online, again, thanks to DRW, uh, who provided space and tra uh, training center, etc. And now my uh, temporal but very important job is I am a part of um, the program committee for first ever PG Day Chicago, which will happen on April 20. I'm very, very, very happy because I've been working on bringing conferences back to Chicago for like past seven years, I think. Uh, so uh, I know it's probably wrong venue to advertise year's conference, but you know, you have network, you have friends, so please, like, you know, we still have space we like still are open for registration and it's going to be great it's going to be a great event free tracks like one day but free tracks and it will be wonderful it will be amazing and i will be there you know and i would not talk oh my gosh you know can you imagine me not talking but i won't okay uh, all right so um why this topic uh First of all, because software engineers are our first customers. You know, if you are in consulting or in any company which sells like software, you're like our customers, our customer focus, you are focused on like, um, I don't know, CTOs, like directors of IT, they are not your customers. Software engineers are your customers. So they feel all these pains. So they are our customers because they use databases. Databases do not run in vacuum. Databases present themselves to the end users through the work of software engineers and UI specialists. So they are our customers. And the second, nobody talks about this. I'm talking about this for like 
uh, 20 plus years in my career. I only have seven years until retirement and US retirement, okay, like not, you are fighting against like, you know, retirement, it's like whatever age. Anyway, so our retirement is 67. I have only seven years left to change the world. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I work with software engineers a lot. I've been working with, uh, in startups and software engineers. So I always hear their side of the story. So that's why I think it's very important for us as Postgres community to talk about these issues. So uh, why they are unhappy? So, we know why we are unhappy, right? These talks are present in many conferences. You go like, oh, they are doing all these like ORMs, they are doing stupid queries, which bring our database down and uh, like lots of things. But do you know why they are unhappy? It's as surprising as you might think. They have a reason to do this. So why they are unhappy? Mostly because they cannot work with database with the tools they used to have. And through the years, I collected the long list of this unhappiness. I will name just some, okay? So, database design tools. So, uh, you know, version control, deployment, tooling, security, and the list goes on and on. And let me talk a little bit about each of these items. So, design tools. You know how, uh, okay, so typical story. That uh, like application developer comes to DBA, say, we need the table. Say, Why are you telling us what table you need? We know what table you need or tables or whatever. You need to tell us what you are going to do and then we will design a table. Like, okay, how we should design it? Tell us. Are there any tools how else we can communicate to you what we want, except if we need a table? And they are correct. We, like, do not tell me we have ER diagrams, like seriously. Do you, do you believe them like coming you with a piece of paper or like, you know, developed like ER diagram? No. So we do not have tools um, and uh, they don't have choices except of designing table and then by complaining they design their tables <coughs> wrongly. Um, so one of my uh, open source projects, NormGen, actually uh, kind of addresses uh, this uh, where, because we're desperately trying to make application developers comfortable telling us what they want without designing tables. Uh, all right, and I need to turn it again. Okay, uh, so on the subject, ORM, uh, core generation. You know what, uh, no, who loves ORM? Nobody, right? If you ever have been dealing at your job with the consequences of database, like application developers using ORM, you cannot be happy, right? ORM is an evil, 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 right? Uh, what do they have? What do we have? What do we, we have to offer nothing because you know what? They will never go back to writing code, writing good SQL because they are used to automated code generation, right? And uh, no, they're going back. And uh, there's a chat GPT <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right? Um, so again, uh, we do not have. Uh, anything like that in uh, PostgreSQL. Again, I have an open source project which tries to address it, but that is a reality. They use ORM because, uh, not because they're lazy, but because it uh, like uh, not uh, economical to write everything by hand. I mean, I do not want to write. I write uh, automated generators for myself, and they do not want, and we have nothing to offer. Okay? So, uh, next, oops, sorry. Uh, version, control, and compare. All right, so, uh, first of all, the difference between us and them, that database can be perfectly fine without storing any code anywhere. So, I don't know how many times you walk in, I mean, I did, walk in startup and saying, where is the source code? Forget about Postgres, Microsoft SQL Server, where is your code? in the database. Um, and when you need to change something, what you do, how you do deployment, we run SQL, period. So all they have. And the thing is, again, uh, because <laughs> database is fine, uh, the database does not need the source code. And that's a problem for application developers. Where is everything? Nowhere. Uh, so, okay, if you are diligent and you actually do GitHub, I do GitHub, I encourage everybody, but like, um, okay, uh, it's in GitHub. It does not mean it's in database, right? So application code in GitHub, it was deployed from there. It's in GitHub. There's GitHub. There's database. 
who can tell you know, that this GitHub corresponds to this database? No way, no mystery. Okay, and uh, on the same note, how you can tell that's database A, that's database B, how they are different? Here, the great question is, uh, what makes two databases different? Because again, with application code, kind of sort of yes. So let's, uh, two tables, uh, order of columns is different. Are these two tables, everything else is the same. Order of columns different. Are they different or not? What do you think? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because if we are like pure database people and we remember uh, relational theory, it does not matter, right? But if somewhere in the code we have insert into table A, select star from table B, yes, it, yes it's bad practice, but how can you tell, right? So it depends, right? If the constraint names are different, constraints are the same. Are these two different or not? Again, it depends because technically I don't care how this constraint is called unless you have some uh, automation which actually will break without it. So in order to tell whether this database is different from that, we need to develop some criteria to compare, right? All right, so that's a like, big problem with us. Uh, it's a problem with us, okay? Because uh, <laughs> we want them to behave and they have no way. And then deploy, man, so do not let me start. Okay, uh, what does it mean to deploy a database chain? So again, uh, we have um, like, um, uh, like application. So when we deploy application, we have GitHub, we have like tagged version, we deploy this version. It's deployed from GitHub. We know this code is running from somewhere. Database is running get without it, right? Uh, and um, even if you are on GitHub, so what you have in GitHub? You have set of tables, right? And how your scripts look like. Drop table, create table, or otherwise uh, create table if exists. We are not deploying from GitHub, we do not want to drop this table, right? We change something, so then how we are deploying from GitHub? We either have to require separate deployment scripts, and then somebody have to validate them, and then uh, we can automatically generate patches, again, uh, how we can tell that the result matches. So those are all the big problems, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, that's again our problems, not their problems, okay? Uh, and for how it does not work. Okay, uh, tooling, oh my gosh, so I have a question of 2023, I mean it had been, but now I'm popularizing it. Why that is that uh, application developer, they develop something cool and saying, here is the library I use. And what we are saying, let me give you a script. What is script? Script is something which is like somewhere, right? You, like, does it matter in your organization, uh, you know, you have consultants from all our like, friends in big consulting companies, they think, I will give you a script. Then the script is somewhere, not in the database, on your local drive, on like uh, OneDrive in the company, somewhere in the internet, we do not have libraries, we have scripts. So like, we, we, do not, we don't have tools, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, you should not use Postgres catalog because catalog can change. Use information schema. Information schema doesn't have half of the things we need. So then we use catalog, and then these scripts, which are everywhere on the internet, the, uh, version changes. The script on the internet does not work. You do not know whom to ask because it's not a library. It's a script on the internet. Okay, so nobody validates them. So. Tooling, that's our problem. So then, uh, security and uh, <laughs> access management. Uh, how many applications connect a super user as Postgres? A lot, a lot. And uh, yeah, use public schema, etc. But again, uh, do they have choices? Yes, we want them to create the user which does the right thing and have right privileges. Um, okay, how you can tell? So in order to know that you created the right user, you need to know how to tell this user have this privilege. Um, do we have a command to tell me? Ask me, like, ask and tell me what are the privileges of this user. Anybody knows this command? Nope. 
it does not exist. Okay, it does not exist. This command does not exist. All right, and uh, now it's not the list of granted roles because you know we have roles and roles can be granted to other roles, and then we individual permission intertwined, and then you can grant login user to the group and group to login user. So I, um, do not let me start. I will have at some point separate presentation about the disasters of all of this security. So. How can you compare that user A and user B have the same uh, privileges? Uh, you cannot. Okay. I mean, uh, so, uh, yeah. And then uh, what we expect <laughs> from the application developers? How to compare permissions in development to, to permissions in productions? Nope. No way. All right. I mean, uh, we're trying. So. Uh, I, we do not have solution to everything, but at least we have some. And partly this talk is just raising awareness that something needs to be done with all these issues. They are not evil application developers. They are our friends, our first users, our like first, uh, you know, QA. But uh, we need to help them. We need to help them to use Postgres correctly. So part of this um, solution is uh, the library, um, which I have. Um, it's so open source, uh, and okay, I need to turn here. Okay, uh, so it calls uh, div uh, square for this. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> you can go to GitHub, and uh, it's actually I have just very few open source projects, and this is one of them. Uh, so. Um, what is the gist of it? We have two uh, databases. We do not compare source code or whatever because it's useless. We actually compare databases. So uh, the, um, how diff works, it, uh, you can create uh, mappings of the catalogs of database one, database two, and uh, then you compare catalogs, and then there are functions which help you to see the differences. So what I can do with this really, really quickly, okay, and, uh, Okay, I'm talking too fast. Everybody lost track. No, not yet. Okay, just tell me if tell me if something. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, oh, gosh. all right. Uh, so, f how how it works? So you can create as many setups as you need. So that is basically for DBA. So you are DBA. You have several environments. For each of these environments, you can set up catalog locally on your local machine. You are not installing everything on your customers, clients, and users, whatever. You install it locally. So this thing will create a, like the mapping for a foreign schema for the catalog of whatever environment you want, and then you compare them all, all over. And anybody can do this, by the way, but you know what they like when we are doing it. In my company now, I do it for many teams, and they'll say, you, you, you can do it. Can you run it? Can you tell us? I can, okay. Uh, so, uh, what's next? Uh, so, for any pair of databases, that's what we can do. We can uh, compare list of schemas, ownerships, list of tables, use materialized views, in-depth comparison of tables, in this comparison of column details, list of consents, and permissions. We can do this, okay? Uh, and we can generate patches. So let me go. Uh, everything what I'm showing is actually in this GitHub, so you can like, look at this, uh, compare details. Uh, and okay, uh, so um, for example, compare schem uh, schemas in the databases. So it's on my local. I have two uh, databases: database Haiti and database Airlines, which are uh, two different copies of my Postgres here. One I'm working on, and one is kind of the clean copy. Uh, and um, I'm running this diff. So what it tells me? It tells me uh, so location. It's where is this difference? And I can tell that Airlines uh, table have several different schemas which do not exist in Haiti database. And uh, it tells me uh, whether the ownership is the same or different. Okay? Uh, so um, that's, uh, that's the first compare. Second compare, uh, it tells me uh, what are the differences with tables use, materialized views. So this call, tables compare. Uh, Database airline and database Haiti, and I compare the schema Postgres Air. So what is different between these two databases? Does not matter in which order, like I'm just showing. So um, what, what we are receiving? We are receiving that in the schema, in airlines, um, we have a table, booking name, uh, which we do not have in Haiti. And then uh, in airlines, we have a view, flight, calc, 
And in Haiti, we have object with the same name, which is material, uh, material, no, it's table, actually, table, okay. And uh, then uh, we have um, a flight departure, which is a view, flight departure materialized view, and flight stats, uh, which is view. That is actually very important because uh, like, that's one of the biggest differences that people overlook because view is the same as table, materialized view is the same as table, so people lose this concept that they may be objects with the same name, but they are of different like, nature. Okay, next. Uh, then we can do in-depth column compare. So this one is kind of like fast track. You want to see whether any tables have any differences in columns. So I'm comparing airlines, Haiti, Postgres, any table, any differences in columns. So I'm getting a lot. Now I want to look at all the tables which are mentioned here and see what is the difference for these particular tables, which I'm doing here. So. Um, between uh, databases, airlines in Haiti, schema Postgres Air, uh, frequent flyer table, what's the difference? Okay, we have extra field in Haiti, which is secondary email, okay? Uh, or uh, the other one, um, so uh, now we have like full column compare. So remember we said, okay, if the column order is different. So full table compare give you comparison of everything if the column order is not the same, if the defaults are different, if null not null is different, so full, full, full compare, okay? Uh, again, between uh, two databases, uh, one table and one schema. And by the way, there is a version because people uh, ask me whether I can do the same for schemas with different names because also for the fun of it, there may be schemas with different names, and we can do this, okay? Uh, so, all, everything is possible. Uh, all right, um, so uh, here, uh, uh, okay, so here is, uh, okay, complete columns compare, what else we have? Okay, uh, now constraints compare, same story. You can do uh, two databases, one schema, all constraints compare, so if anything is different, we can tell, okay? And now, yeah, we can generate patches. So uh, either way, you know, we do not know which one is right. So you can bring from development to production, from production to development, because shoot, while we were developing, somebody else deploys something else in production. So both ways. So uh, this way of calling it, um, I want to patch table frequent flyer in schema Postgres Air, and I want to bring changes from Haiti to Airlines, and then uh, that's my one. Uh, okay, well, let's show. Okay, so that's my patch which bring in from Haiti to airlines. I need to add secondary email and drop uh, not null on email, or the other way around. Now uh, the second patch generation is the other way. So now bring changes from airlines to Haiti, and that will generate a different patch because now I'm actually dropping this frequent flyer and setting email not now. So all is generated, and after you run it, you can compare and see that now it's awesome, not, no differences. Okay, and uh, okay. So tooling, uh, that is not open source, so I'm just showing the idea, but anybody can do this. Because as I said, there are tools all over internet, on your hard drive, in your company directory, like anywhere. So I'm fighting this, let me give you a script thingy. So how I'm fighting it, uh, we created a DBA tools schema, and all the scripts which are packaged there, that's for my company, all the scripts are not mine. They are from everywhere on the internet, but I collect them, I package them, and for each of the databases we are deploying, we are deploying DBA tools, and um, we can do all the scripts, you know, uh, object sizes, table bloat, index bloat, so pretty much each time somebody runs something more than twice, goes there. It's great, actually. And then, uh, because you know what? You are on call, you have like, we have like 200 production databases. Like, forget about QA tests, et, et cetera. You need to do something fast. You do not want to find, the, you know, look for where was the script. Uh, they are all there. Everything you can run is there. Okay. Access management, okay, like, do not let me start. And yeah, I, I'm looking, I'm looking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, again, uh, I want to have separate talk about this access management, but again, what we have, okay, what we have. We have uh, 
So how you can say that you, this user can do something and this user cannot? There is no easy way. Why there is no easy way? Because uh, they can receive these privileges from many different places, right? So we have uh, privileges compare here. So <clears throat> these ones are comparing privileges on schema. Okay, uh, then the other version, uh, like uh, compares privileges uh, on the, uh, like, uh, wait, it's okay, schema, yeah, schema reporting, and the other version, where is my table compare? Okay, yeah, so this one compares uh, actually uh, all permissions on the same schemas, yeah, airlines, Haiti, yeah. Uh, so uh, create usage, etc. cetera. Uh, then uh, we have separately privileges which were granted directly for a specific user. So here we have schema privileges and we have table privileges. And uh, then we can compare um, all privileges. So two setups. If you have grant select on all tables and schema to new user, okay, or you can grant select uh, on schema uh, specific table to new user, grant each table separately, you get the same set of privileges. If uh, you can grant uh, select on all tables to the role and then grant this role, then user will have the same privilege. So there are at least three different ways to grant the same set of privileges to the user. And when um, you know, I started to develop it, when I was suggesting my management to do better, like permission management, that if I will use your schema, how we can tell that it would not break? So how you can tell that the user will have the same set of privileges if we like scratch all existing privileges and get your way, which is by rules. Okay. So then I wrote this thing. Then I wrote this thing which compares what are like the final final privileges. So this one is not mine. You can find it all over internet. Recursive query, um, which um, like. Uh, shows how to extract the chain of roles granted. Again, remember, there may be also some individual permissions in between, but uh, this uh, total function, so when I recently blogged about this and people like didn't like what I blogged, said, hey, Katie, I have a function. So I went to this GitHub, so her function was 110 lines, my function is 117 lines, so uh, I mean, uh, we got it. So, my message to Postgres community, people should not write 117 lines of code to tell what are the privileges of this user. And something should be done with this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, but uh, now, at least, it's packaged in the function. <laughs> so, if you... <laughs> Use a uh, diff, uh, it's like, uh, okay, so this uh, thingy selects all privileges ever granted on um, the database, Hetty, and from this output, you can select a specific username, and then you can actually see uh, what was uh, granted for this user, okay? And I mean, you can go, uh, okay, let me just go back one sec, okay, sorry. Uh, so you can go all the way down, so no matter where this select or where this insert or where this usage came from, you will have the final list of privilege. So that is the only way actually to see that you did not screw up when you change the privileges. So run here, run here, compare, intersect, union, minus, and uh, you, you, you'll see what you messed up or not. Okay. So, uh, ah. So what I want to do here, uh, I want to compare indexes because it's not done and people ask about this. Uh, compare triggers, compare functions and procedures. That is like an uh, interesting topic, but <laughs> hopefully in the works. And uh, not all the patches are generated automatically, so that is on my to-do list. And my big ask is what should be documented in uh, Postgres, because again, I had this discussion recently on all means of social media, and uh, basically said, no, it should not, uh, because, and again, because, because we are dependent on Postgres versions, and because the scripts are all over internet, I honestly think they should. Uh, yeah, uh, so other issues I did not mention. So designing tools we did not, I mean, I mentioned, but I did not mention still. Using of unit tests, uh, I can have the whole talk about using unit tests. We have PGTAP, who is using it like pretty much nobody, like 1% of people is using PGTAPs and su supporting them and actually stopping the build when they fail. Like, like 
you, you use it, right? Oh, no, no, okay. So, like, less than 1%, maybe, honestly. And we have it. Why we are not using it? It's a mystery. Uh, branching data, I, there, I saw some um, versions of data branching, but again, it's like very little. We do not have the technology for this. Uh, again, something I really, really want to happen before I retire. Again, I have seven years to change the world. Okay, so please. Um, and uh, yeah, so. That was it. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, yeah, any any questions? Because everybody is quiet. I don't know. So, <laughs> yep, please. Thank you so much for your talk, Hedy. Um, are there any questions? We have a microphone. Hello. Yeah. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, myself, I'm a software engineer, so it was really, really interesting and to have someone focus on our needs and how to get a better usage of the database. Um, I have, it's more a remark than a question. Um, if I understand correctly, you need an extra database to install your tool and then analyze another database. And I was wondering if you want to uh, get more traction from software engineer, would you um, um, try to get it as a real tool? I mean, like something you can run outside of a database on the database you want to analyze. Okay. Okay. I think it would get more traction from software engineers. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, lots of things actually can run standalone, like this privileges compare can run standalone. So most of the times, the question I wanted to answer, question I ask, we have physically two different databases. So mostly like very typical, we have production, we have like two development copies, somebody developing something on each of the copies, now uh, how they're different. And that's why you're right, uh, and I think people should have, you know, installing local Postgres is like one click. I mean, if you're on Mac, like... Uh, it runs, okay? You install the app, it runs. You, you can create, and you do not need to have anything in this database. You can just deploy this deployment of diff is like one click. So uh, when you physical, uh, so again, if you are comparing two environments, you kind of have to have another environment. So um, that is more like, uh, again, uh, non-intrusive for any of your environments. But uh, like a previous, I am actually thinking of deploying it standalone because it's something which is very important. Yeah, and you know, from the um, application developer perspective, like if you would venture to this GitHub, you can look at norm, norm gen, that's like more application developer gear because it helps like uh, to, <laughs> you know, to live without a RAM and like, kind of be more conscious about like how you query database. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. More questions? Comments? Because that's what <laughs> Hedy does. So yes. you can yes. totally also yes. do yes. comments. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. No. Otherwise, no. what time is it? Oh, yeah. well, look. One more question. There. In the back. Thank you. Uh, for running your, your scripts, does the users need specific privileges on the target database. Uh, uh, oh, uh, okay, so uh, whatever, no, uh, actually you need to have read privilege to the other database. If you don't have read privileges, then you are not supposed to compare this. Sorry. So pretty much um, when you create this mapping, you give a user which you use to connect to this database. And anybody can read Postgres catalog pretty much. So it's kind of like public sure. privilege. So if you have any user which can connect to this database, you, you can give this name and password when you create it. Okay. Then it will be all good. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone after that question was like, oh, that's interesting. I have another question. Mm -hmm. Nope? No. Nope? No. no. All right. Then we have our next speaker starting at quarter past, so you can quickly, you know, fuel up on coffee and then yeah. come back here for Leticia's talk. Thank you so much, Hedy. Let's give yeah. another round of applause for Hedy. Yeah.